welcome. <laughs> we have three hours together. Let me just give you a little overview. So you should be seeing my setup. Now you're gonna say, hey, wasn't this a macro? Isn't this a macro shoot? It is a macro. I'm using a macro filter. So the reason why I wanted, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna photograph with them and I'm gonna use my macro filter because um, I wanna play with it more. I wanna learn more about photographing with a macro filter. So yes, I'm still macro shooting. So let me get over here and you can see my setup. This is why I have it ready. Um, I need to make sure everything's off and we're focused. Okay, so you guys know, you guys know my setup and what I'm, woo, what I'm trying to accomplish. And just like June was saying, you know, I got a lot of issues going on with my setup. You could see right here, look at the yellow. This is a yellow, con that's from my lights that are above me. So I'm going to get a, I'm going to actually white balance my, my shot. And you do not have to do this right now, but hold on once again. Um, I, well, I'm probably just, I'm not gonna use a white, white thing, but I'll, what I'll do is I'll do Kelvin. I do Kelvin a lot. So, and that's on my computer where I can change the color, uh, not my computer, my camera. So my camera does Kelvin and you can change the temperature of your shot if it's looking funky. So um, I'm going to do this and I'm, I've got a reflections in here. Let me show you that I'm gonna think about. See, the, I don't know if you could see the reflections. So I'm going to work on that. I'm gonna work, so here's my, there's, see those yellow? That's yellow. Well, another thing that's happening is that the flashlight that I have is not warm. It's a different temperature. So that may be funky for you too. So let me share with you. Uh, let's go here. And then I'm gonna, I, then I wanna see you guys, I wanna see what you guys are doing and tell me what you're shooting. Okay, someone jump back in. Let me see who's here. Admit. Awesome. David, you're back. Cool. Hello. Hello. You should be back. No problem. So I'm just sharing my setup and then I want to look at yours. So what I've, I'm just going to explain my situation and then we'll see yours again, like, like I've said before. But my situation is that I, I can't have enough hands. And my other situation is that this light right here that you're seeing, that is not, <laughs> you like my, my um, Claudia, one of these days is gonna be with me. <laughs> I'm sharing you my, this is how I share my behind the scenes. So for me, uh, it's really about the light, two different light sources, and I'm gonna have to play with my color because that could be an issue. Uh, I do love the way it's flowing on here. I've even got some more wisterias over here if I need to um, see these little babies. Kevin, he, when he picked it, I said, oh, I want more of the stem. So that right there is, um, I might play with that too. But I do have the black plexi and I have velvet so it doesn't refract. I have velvet up here. This is a different kind of velvet. Everything's black to keep it nice and dark and I'm gonna use my filter. Now all this other stuff here, let me show you. All this other stuff, this is just because Janice has gotten, um, see, I got a platypod. This is a platypod. You don't need all this stuff. If you're gonna stack, if any of your flowers are gonna be stackable, then I would do a rail. That's a different rail that I normally use. I'm, I'm trying that out. And, uh, but those are just like, I don't know, they're just extras. It's not like gonna, it's not gonna make or break your photographs. You don't need all that. It's just, I've gotten a bunch of tools and I'm using them, but you can definitely just have a tripod. One thing I do wanna say, if you have a mirror in your camera and you're photographing close, this is macro, unless you're using a flash, I don't know, um, at least if you're using a flash, cause I can help you with that if you're using a ring flash. Uh, I, I want to tell you another tip. Here's another tip. So I'm going to tether my 
I'm going to tether right now. And this will help you, June. So what I want to say is, though, that every time you shoot a macro, you really should put your, if you have a mirror, lock up your mirror in your camera. Lock this up. And it should be under menu, and you should be able to find it. And you just lock your mirror. So what that does is it opens up the mirror. And this way, when you push the shutter or you use something like this to push the shutter or you use a timer on your camera, because every little jiggle, people ask me, wow, how do you get it so sharp? Well, this is what I love about indoor flower shooting. You can get it tack sharp by tethering, by using a you know, shutter release and if you have a camera that has the actual mirror inside, open it up. And then when you shoot, you sh if you're stacking images today, I can help you on that. That's taking several different pictures and putting it in as one um, in Photoshop or on one or Lightroom even does it now. It's not a big deal. We can, if you're doing heavy stacks on flowers, then we would have to talk about Helicon and Zarine Stacker. That's a different software that you may want in the future. But what I'd like to say is always give yourself three seconds increment before you push the button. So you push the button. Then if you want to stack and move your um, image, you know, move your camera, then you you know, you do little increments because we know that every, you know, shallow depth of field when we get up close, wait for three seconds, push it again. Even with when I'm walking on my, I'm walking here and moving, you would be surprised that it actually moves your camera. It actually moves the, the there's a vibration. So to get tack sharp, tip, tip, tack sharp, do those steps. Tether to C. Make sure you have your mirror open. Use either a timer or a shutter release. Great, super tips. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen because now it's your turn. Now you can see, blow a signal goes 2,500. And then if you want to get it too, if you get it warm, that's going to be too warm. 5,500 is, we'll do 5,000. 5,500 is daylight. Let's see how that works. And let's look, I'm looking at the RGB. I figured it would be better just to show you in Photoshop the Kelvin. It's just so you could see it straight up in your face. So when we go over here to the right where it says 5,000, this is straight from camera. I haven't done anything with this uh, image. Please, whatever you guys do, make sure you get your composition set, everything the way you like first if, when you go through all this uh, work of getting the color correct. I admit that I was in a rush trying to get this ready for you. This is the day before the show. <laughs> oh, Janice should not be procrastinating. But I didn't think about doing this until the last second, to tell you the truth. And look at how cool this is right in here. But anyways, I wanted to share with you some of the uh, way it would look. So, of course, this also depends on what kind of lighting you have initially on the flower itself. That will depend on what type of Kelvin you would like to use. But you can usually fix your color issues by changing the Kelvin in the camera. So you can see the difference. This is 5000 and this is 2950 in your camera settings under the Kelvin. So as you get lower in the Kelvin, it becomes, the image becomes bluer. But if your light source is very orange and has an orange cast on the flower, it will really help you. All right, let's get back to the program.